Yo! <laughs> Woo! We're a little yes. close tonight. We're a little up close and personal tonight. Webcam did not work out, so we're just we're just we're just making it happen. So hey, welcome everybody. Let's see who we got on already. Seven comments already happening. George, Leroy, <laughs> welcome, welcome, hey, Sal. Guys. Glad you guys are here. Man, we are going to have an incredible night. It's going to be fun. We got a special interview going on, special yes. guest tonight. Yes. He's already in the green room, riled up. Um, I saw him uh, drinking something beforehand. I don't know, <laughs> uh, some sort of energy drink, I'm assuming. Yeah. Um, no no uh, accusations it, here. It was smoking. I don't remember. It was smoke yeah. in the yeah. back. Yeah. It, it should be a wild night. So <laughs> um, I love it, man. I love it. So um, we're going to open up with. Uh, our hall. Yeah, let's week, do this. So as out. always, let's start our week out. I didn't get anything, man. I, I don't know what happened this week. I didn't. Everything that's in the mail. I've got packages in the mail that say they're four days late and have not come in yet. So I don't have anything for this week's haul. But I hear you ended up with some really great stuff for this week's yeah. haul. Yeah. Remember uh, Zach's comic auction we've talked about before and Zach was on here. I got a big jag. Wait, 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 wait. George. George is already saying, what Neil Adams books did James buy this week? Well, how, how dare you yeah. insult how, him? How did you even know that? <laughs> um, actually, I did buy a few this week yeah. and I won't, have them, I won't have them for a week or so. Yeah. But yes, I did. Uh, the Krusty Bunkers mystery game, you know, I got a couple of issues from that. Yeah, where I'm, trying, I'm trying to win the uh, uh, remark. Yeah. On there, and not just the signature. And I didn't win the remark, but I got two signatures. Blah blah blah. So for, let's segue right into Neil Adams, and then I'll go back to the hall for this week. Okay. I've actually had this stuff for a while, and if I can find the right book where I put it, where did I sit that? Oh, right. all right. He's lost this stuff there it already. Is. Okay. Oh, here we go. Try to get glareless. Got, got come this way. Come towards me. Yeah, there, there it is. You go. There it is. The Spectre number two. This was done by Neil. I think he wrote and did the entire issue, not just the cover. Yeah. Okay. So I've had this a while, but I've always been a Spectre fan, and I've always been a major fan of Neil's rendition of the Spectre. Right. One, so one might say you're a spectator of I'm the a, Spectre. I'm a spectator. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's better was, than being a commentator. Oh. Ooh. Of a potato. That's right. Of which we don't know the gender. So this is, <laughs> yes, I've had this for a little while, but we started, I, I ordered it or bought it in the fall. Uh, we had to do the payment plan because it cost a little bit. Yeah. But <laughs> da, 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 original pen, ink, color wow. with the Kirby crackle, the That's Spectre. Man. And I'll show beautiful. you the back. You can see the color bleeding through. Yeah. That's all original Originally. marker on there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's and gorgeous, so, man. yeah, we're thrilled with it. Uh, I showed it to my wife and she was like, buy that. So, yeah. Yeah. Got a Battle Brick Road poster this week. Nice. All right. Way to go, man. Excellent. Way to go. Excellent. Way to go. And then you end up with a box from, uh, man, we, from we, Zach. so we interviewed a guy that's been doing a uh, live auction on Facebook for about six years, Zach of Zach's live uh, comic auctions. Um, and so you ended up with a haul from him also that just, oh, yeah. Like, man. Crazy haul. Wow, this is great. Look at all this stuff, y'all. Iron Man number five. There's uh here's number 48. It's nothing amazing, but it's good. Some great classics. Here's a really nice Daredevil 40. Check nice. that one out. Nice. That's oh, clean. Yeah. That's a clean. Look at the one. color on that, guys. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. The corners are even pretty crisp on that. Oh no, this is a this one's in great shape. Wow, that's unbelievable. This one's in okay shape. I mean it's not bad. But it's got it's a great cover. Doctor Doom. Nice. Daredevil. That's number 20, 37. Yeah. And uh here is a Thor, number 140, that is in really good shape. I think it's a 5.0 if I had to guess. Yeah. <laughs> if you had to, the, it's, it's on written the, on the thing. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's a great cover, though. All right. Got uh here's if you guys are a fan of this, ROM, ROM number Space one. Uh, yes. Every so time you need a toy to come out, the comic book with it. That's right. So another great Thor, and there's the I think that's the ringmaster, yeah. the guy that's on there with him. Wow! And number one thirty two. Awesome. This looks a 6. like 0. this. Th that's a six five. This guy looks like a uh, like a mix between Abe Lincoln and the Joker, right? Am yeah, I <laughs> it's, it's the ringmaster. You can't yeah. trust this. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Submariner with Triton, number all three. For, so this is all a mystery the, box, right? Leviathan. 
No, no, I actually okay. There were certain yeah, That's yeah. Epic, no, this bro. one's killer. It's killer. Wow. Um, some of these I bought blind. He will auction them off. I bought the majority of these. You put it up there, you bid, you stop where you want to stop. It's <laughs> oh, Leroy. Okay, so you're a DC fan. Oh, or you're just indie only. Yeah, he's uh, maybe indie only. This is old school, man. Hey, this is old say. school Kirby stuff. Yeah, and that's you see the majority of this stuff is Kirby, uh, we'll, and, we'll, and that's my thing. We'll my forgive wheelhouse. you of your bad opinions. Yeah, we love you still. It doesn't seem like a very even fight. Yeah, no armor, <laughs> no advanced weaponry. You're totally right, and one of them can't see. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, yeah. Hulk 104. Check this out with the Rhino. I think that's probably the first time he yeah, ran into man. the Rhino. I think unless it was, unless it was when it was uh, Tales to Astonish, but I don't think so. And 104 was the second issue after it became the Incredible Hulk wow. from Tales to Astonish. Because 102 beautiful. was the first official Hulk. It's a beautiful copy too, man. It's a great one. Wow. Yeah. Here's the Owl, Daredevil, an early one. Uh, is that who? 20? Yeah. <laughs> who? 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 The world may never know. I'm, I'm on it with the dad jokes to get Yes. In, man. Yes. Real quick, Unmasked, 29. Yeah, nice. Here's where they changed up the Daredevil spelling for a period, and they put the dash yeah, on the, it. Yeah, uh, the logo was changed with a hyphen. That's funny. And it's a good Spider-Man Daredevil cover. Yeah. Number three. And this one is an 8-5 Captain America and the Falcon with a great Spider-Man cover. Yeah, Look at so that. cool. Yeah. Number what 137. a haul, man. What a haul. Yeah, that's not everything, but that's all we'll show right now. Yeah. Because like, we got more I'll show at another. But maybe all next right. Week. Well, I'll tell you, you know, on, on collection side, the old stuff's fun to collect, man. It's it's just, that's you it. know, and I don't, I, I'm not picky on it, man. I like it all. Yeah. I just, I like it. So. Yeah. What I do nowadays is I find copies of books that I wanted for 50 years, literally. Yeah. yeah. And it went since I was a very young kid. And anyway, nice. And so now I'm getting my hands on them. Yeah, we'll show sure. our giant size X Men number one for you just to help out. So um, yeah. it's coming out. All right. All right. So, okay. You want to go ahead and introduce our guest tonight? Yes. I had the pleasure of meeting <laughs> Mr. What? I was like, you want to introduce our guest tonight? Yes. Yes. Take a breath. <laughs> Had the pleasure of meeting Mr. Posios oh, three years ago, I think it was, and uh, he's shaking his head yes. He's going to be on here in a second. Uh, he is the writer and creator of Time Grunts. He has other projects, too, that we're going to let him talk to you about. Well, Johnny. Johnny Phantasm, uh, which is a great book, and they've got these killer toys that and go then we along were, with it. We yeah. were talking with Brian. Silverback last right, week. Right, right, right. And uh, Evan's a part of the Kara Prime. Kara Prime, that's right. That's right. So and br that Brian does art for. Well, right. let's let's uh, and, and and overall cool guy, uh, a lawyer. Yes. Become a comic artist. Yeah, and I believe he was in uh, New Orleans. He was in Louisiana. Nolans. He got his degree. New Orleans. Yep. Nice. Yep. Yep. So, All right. So no further ado. Here we go. Hey, hey. gentlemen, how you doing? How you doing? Hey. Good to see you guys. Good, yes, sir. All shout right. Out to, uh, shout out to George and Leroy in the chat as well. Oh my gosh, I yeah. love them. They're blowing it up for us. They're blowing it up for us. And Sal's hopping around there somewhere. So, all I, I right. Have to, I have to ask James, uh, does the wife know about all these purchases? <laughs> um, um, some of them, yes. Okay. Maybe the all majority. Right. The biggest yeah. purchase that I showed tonight, she, I showed it to her to get approval. I was like, what do you think of this? I, I want it. <laughs> get it. Get it. So, you know. Man, Doreen, Doreen is – she's <laughs> – She's a partner in crime in this stuff, man. She's awesome. Hey, so. I'm going to tell you, this is a, this is a secret formula right here. You get you a little stack of books that you really, really want, and you show it to your wife, and then you produce the bag of different clothing items that she was looking for on the other thing and say, look, here's your kimono, here's your boots, whatever. She's like, yes, I love comic books. There you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. All right. You got it down to a science. That's yeah, right. That's yeah. right. Yeah, I love it. Nice. You should, we'll have we'll have uh, seminars on how to keep your wife happy while buying That's ridiculous right. amounts of comic books. That's right. Uh, that'll be a class we teach, man. So I think well, you just created a new stream. I, I love it, man. We're we're <laughs> saving marriages and making comic books awesome again. That's, That's what right. we're doing. That's, That's what right. we're doing. So, <laughs> well, dude, uh, let's let's talk about some stuff you've been into, man. Because you're you're doing a bunch of stuff right now. And yeah. let me start with this. Let me start with this. 
Uh, I, I've been back in uh, Johnny Phantasm, man. The the storyline on that is so fun, man. Um, I love the Sugar Skull art that goes along with it, but the story is really, really cool, man. So uh, really enjoyed that, man. Yeah, I'm I'm lucky enough to be uh, working with uh, Patrick Thomas Parnell on that, who's just amazing. Uh, he graduated from the Kubert School. Yeah, uh, his knowledge of storytelling is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, he's been an instructor at Ringling, uh, so I, I mean I'm blessed to be working with this guy and you know the, the other uh, talented artists I'm working with. Now, did he? Is he the? Was this his idea and he he brought you into it, or was it your idea and you brought him, or was there some sort of? How, how did the partnership on that work out? So Patrick and I met uh, while working on Time Drunks, um, yeah. which is illustrated by Alex Sanchez, and we needed a colorist. And uh, I really liked uh, the stuff that I saw from Patrick. And I could tell he had the hunger and he had the desire to sort of do his own book. And uh, I, I threw this pitch at him about a, uh, a hitman who was haunted by the ghosts of his victims. And we kind of tweaked it a little bit, and then he came up with all of the uh, design work for the character and sort of just taken off from there. I mean, uh, yeah. the, resp the response has been phenomenal. And then, um, so anyone backing that project right now, so 1985 uh, is the latest one coming out. And if they're backing that, they need to get, if they especially want the, comic, the uh, action figure that goes along with it. By the way, what a cool idea, man. Um, that's, that's, that's so fun, but that ends tonight at midnight, right? It does. So uh, the timing of the show is uh, outstanding. Um, we've sold over 500 figures, which is pretty crazy for. Uh, Whoa! Yeah. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Oh. That is. But yeah, the, uh, the, this uh, is on. Uh, is this on Indiegogo or is it on? This is on, on Indiegogo. Uh, there's a limited number of figures left. Okay. Uh, okay. Some of the packages include the 1985 book, which is the last opportunity to buy that. Um, so definitely, if you're out there and you like. Uh, the 80s if you like beetlejuice if you like scarface go ahead and check it out if you love toys and action figures from the 80s definitely go check it out yeah this this addresses every area that you just talked about i mean it you've got it covered with this this character this story the, the figures it's great it's it's it, and avid collectors you've got it nailed right there because it you've got so many things to please them and make them happy definitely definitely well, it's, yeah, yeah the oh, very that you're throwing in there is what I love about on the indie side of things that are happening right now, it's genius is that you are also, you're not just going for the guys that like stories. I mean, that's my thing. I love the story behind comics. I, and that's why I like interviewing everyone is I like the idea of how it was created, where it got started, but I also love collecting stuff. And so the fact that right. the, the indies are really killing it on that stuff right now, I guess that's how we compete right in, in the area we're going on right now. So here we are. There they are. There we go. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now let me ask you, Evan, uh, when this, if, if someone misses it tonight or today and they're like, dang, I wish I could have gotten that. It w will this be in demand where they can go and go ahead and this, participate? Th th this actually is an in demand. We've, we've, uh, sold, I think $11,000 worth of figures since it's been in demand. Wow. That's okay. Incredible. So this, this is pretty much it. Uh, there might be a random figure here and there to show, but for these three figures, this is it. Wow. wow. That's okay. Awesome, bro. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. So and then um, so uh, and you 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 told us you're also working you're working on two projects right now. I think a total I'm working on like eight projects right now. I mean, my yeah, favorite, I love. Yeah, my How are you keeping that grind going, man? You know, it's uh, it's the love. You know, I, yeah. I love uh, telling stories. Uh, you know, things that are burning inside of me, and then also working with you know uh, new artists is is always uh, you know reinvigorating. Um, yeah. and, and like I said, I'm blessed to be working with guys like Alex Sanchez, Patrick Parnell, now uh, Stefano Cardicelli, who's just phenomenal. So, yeah, uh, yeah just keep banging them out, and uh, you know, hopefully, uh, the response is positive. Yeah, that's awesome. Man. Yeah, and, and it has been, it's been just amazing. I, I sit there in awe going, man, these guys have got it figured out. Yeah, really, I'm so impressed, and it, it's just wonderful stuff. The product is there, you know, yeah, for sure, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, should and, and so, me, you should see me the other 23 hours of the day. Not so much. <laughs> I mean, are, are you, are you doing, are you writing now full time or are you also, I mean, you're, are you, are you still being a lawyer too? A lawyer? I'm, guess, uh, right? I'm a licensed attorney, but I haven't practiced in quite some time, okay. but I'm still oh, okay. very, very involved in the, in the family restaurant business in Detroit. So. Yeah, oh takes, yeah. 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 
Yeah. Wow. Whenever we get to Detroit, we're going to check that place out. What's the name of it? Uh, Gus's Coney Island. You got to come up. Actually, we have a comic book theme in one of the stores, and uh, nice. pretty cool artwork all over the place. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to talk about that because now you got me drooling. I'm just like, yeah, I'm going. Yeah. yeah there yeah, you yeah. go. That's awesome. So I guess I guess there's a, a weird noise being picked up on this mic tonight, uh, and they think it's my smoke detector again. Um, that house burned down, so we had to get a new house. So the new house comes with new uh, – it's wired in battery, so yeah. it's good. Yeah. All right. Okay, so um, so you, the project you got going on right now, the, the one that's getting ready to launch, which is what Brian had mentioned to us, is Care Prime comes out in April. Right. What, what's the, did you say the Red Hawk story or the Red yeah. – yeah, um, I was uh, fortunate enough to have Brian approach me about writing uh, a short story for the anthology. And for people who don't know or didn't watch last week, he's created this amazing world called Kara Prime. That's sort of a mix of uh, Avengers, but in a sort of dystopian Mad Max kind of world uh, that's pretty nutty. Uh, so, you know, there are a few slots open and I chose to write a story about a character called Red Hawk, who is uh, part of the uh, Hopi tribe. Uh, from Arizona, yeah, and um, it's it's a lot of fun. I uh, was fortunate enough to get Stefano to uh, to do the artwork on that, and then uh, Letter Squids is doing the letters. But um, you guys should go check out caraprime dot com. There's uh, I think over fifteen stories, yeah, and a lot of up, up covers. Uh, Bob France, Kevin Cuff, uh, uh, Jonathan Hedrick, uh, Alton Simpson. Stefano, uh, Brian, of course, who's just killing it on those uh, recount variant covers, which are yeah, just going yeah. you know, yeah. through the roof. Yeah. I, you know what? I, yeah, awesome. Brian's jumping on now. <laughs> yeah, he's like, <laughs> my ears are burning, yes. Well, and, and we were talking with Brian, too. The thing we were telling Brian, Brian, if you have the link from last week, just jump on real quick, and we'll, we'll say hi to you also. You can jump in on this. But um, uh, the thing we were, that we thought that I love about this is the idea that you're building a sandbox for people to play in. And, and you're inviting so many people to come in. I really think it's going to be one of those things that's going to help indie commies. commies. Indie commies. <laughs> oh yeah. Not here. Tyrannical <laughs> leader Brian Silverback. <laughs> We're indie commies. We're not associated with the Soviets. We are our own. Oh, man. But uh, I, I just think it's, I think it's amazing. I, I think this is going to be great on how it's going to be launched in new creators, giving people opportunities, and just a great sandbox to play in for the connection of everything. So. Very cool, yeah. man. Very cool. I think it's a win-win for ever, everyone involved. I mean, we get a little yeah. bit of exposure. Uh, obviously, Brian gets, uh, you know, uh, more stories out there than he could possibly, you know, do on his own, probably. Right. Uh, and then also, you know, the fans get a taste of, uh, you know, different stories and different artwork and see what they like and yeah. maybe new creators. Yeah. That they like. yeah. yeah. And when this thing launches, I mean, uh, we're not going to have to wait a long time to get – uh, this coming in, right? A lot of this has already been going on in the background. So when this thing launches, it's not like you're waiting a huge amount of time after backing the project, right? No. Or am I wrong on that? Did I understand that? No, no. He's uh, he's taken the role of uh, sort of project manager. Uh, right. he's, yeah, been, he's the yeah. Kevin Feige of Care Prime. That's right. Told us. That's right. Yeah, uh, sort of keeping everybody in line and on schedule. So we yeah. we were uh, we knocked it out pretty quick. We were super excited, and I think we we did the entire story in about two weeks and it's just, it's killer. Yeah. Uh, I, can't, I can't wait till he shows off some of the artwork for it. I think I sent you maybe one page from it. Uh, I don't know if we can show that or not eventually. Yeah. Let me, let me pull that up, man. Yeah. yeah. You'll find it. Let's see. Brian, close your, eye, close your eyes for a second. <laughs> Let's see. It's not, Let's see. It, is it is it the one with the right before the second site publishing? No, that's silence. Hold on. Uh, there, now you there you go. There it is. All right, here we go. Let's see if I can. I can't make it any bigger. Is the problem? Though. Okay. Well, of course. Hold on. Our professional behavior here. Boom. There. There it is. It is. There's something. This there's Red Hawk. Is that the page we're allowed to show? <laughs> Hopefully. <Yeah>. Well, <laughs> we, we just did. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. Brian in the background. No. But yeah, yeah, that's awesome, uh, that's art by uh, Stefano Cardicelli, who's got a hit on his hands with uh, Sweet Downfall over at Scout. Uh, yeah. Le letters by Letter Squids, who's doing the work on Silence and a couple other projects I'm working on. But uh, I'm really happy with how that came out. Yeah, love it. That's awesome, man. 
Yeah, this Kara Prime, with everyone contributing, the different artists, the different writers, the different stories, like little one shots all through there, it's just expanding and making the brand, you know, such an it's it's making it iconic in my opinion. Yeah. And it's it's a it's a brand that everyone's gonna take notice of because of the diverse uh contributors to the project. Yeah, you know? def definitely. Yeah. I think I think he's gonna have a major hit on his hands. Yeah, I love it, man. Um, I don't know if Leroy's trying to say that we're having bad internet connection. I might have to switch. It's kind of uh, whistling back and forth, but all right. Know. Well, we'll figure that out. Yeah, but, we'll get it. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, so Kara Prime's rocking it, and then you're also doing Silence, right? Yes, uh, Silence was uh, the first project signed this year by uh, Second Sight Studios, which is a relatively new publisher. Um, it is a horror thriller uh, illustrated by Alex Sanchez. And it deals with stress, and it's something that everyone can can relate to. Uh, you know, uh, everyday life's uh, difficulties with regard to paying bills or relationships or work, and uh, letting that get out of hand to the nth power. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh, we we definitely did. Uh, we tried to create create something similar to the uh, the old tales of the unexpected uh, stories that DC had in the seventies with. Yeah. Yeah horror mixed with a surprise ending and i think i think we're uh we're gonna pull, pull it off nicely that's great love it thank you yeah well cool man well let's talk about uh let's just talk about um kind of how you oop, hit the wrong button there <laughs> knock the wrong person off the stream well just uh, let's go ahead and talk in uh how, how you got started into all this i mean how do you go from being a lawyer i love saying that a barrister <laughs> <laughs> To, to get into this area that you're that you're doing now, man. What what, know, was, the, what was the switch over on that? It, you know, it's it, it's crazy because you go through life and you wonder at times, why am I doing this or or why am I doing that? And, uh, everything converged for me to be at this point right now. I mean, uh, I truly believe I was meant to do this. You know, from from growing up to you know having my dad. Uh, let me uh, choose comics off the spinner rack before we close the restaurant at night in the summer, uh, all the way to, you know, uh, going to New York Comic Con and uh, going to a, a writing seminar there. Um, and then even law school. I mean, you would think, you know, law and comics and, and how do these two, you know, work together? Uh, but actually, law school teaches you a logical way of thinking that's very important when scripting. You know, the story has to make sense. There has to be some sort of flow. Uh, I think that helps. And obviously living in New Orleans for three years, I mean, uh, you know, had an influence on me in terms of, you know, living in an area that was rich in art, and culture and history. So, you know, uh, it all came together a little bit yeah. late. But it all came together. <laughs> You're preaching to the choir here on this end. Yeah. Yeah. And I love it. I love that story because it's kind of my whole thing with the Bobcat was a full circle deal. Uh, you know, I, my beginnings of the character and the whole concept started 50 years ago. Right. And then, and, and then when I turned 50, several years back, <laughs> uh, yeah, I decided to get into it, uh, you know, jump in with both feet and, and lay it all out there. And so I've been going ever since, and I'm not as prolific as you are, which, and I totally admire and respect that you're able to do that. I, I'm, uh, I mean, you, you're, the Bobcat is awesome. And I think, yeah. uh, it's it's poised to really uh, blow up in the near future. And We're then, hoping so. Thank yeah, you. I, th I think so too, man. I, that's, that's why I'm hanging out, just the right is coattail. <laughs> <laughs> just hanging out. I just hit the buttons, make sure he gets online because I want to see him do awesome things. But so it was Time Grunts kind of the big, the first big introduction into uh, your your being an author. Or? Yeah, that was that was my first published work. Um, and basically it's sort of an homage to my childhood. Um, yeah. I, I have fond memories of uh, watching old war movies with my dad, you know, Guns of Navarone, Dirty yeah. Dozen, uh, also, you know, Spaghetti Westerns and whatnot. And uh, I, uh, I went to a, uh, a script writing course out in LA uh, taught by Robert McKee. Okay. And um, originally Tom Burns was going to be a screenplay and I, you know, wrote down certain beats and whatnot and, I said, you know what, this would make a, a great comic. So I reached out to Alex Sanchez and he's, uh, I pitched it as sort of, uh, you know, GI Joe meets time bandits and he sort of, you know, jumped at it. So yeah, and the rest, 
the rest is history there. That's awesome. Now, one of the characters in the book is based on your father. Is that correct? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah. Um, you know, I just wanted a, a way to sort of uh, honor my dad and sort of his Greek ancestry. So there's a character called Zorba um, who definitely uh, looks like a, a version of my dad from the 70s with these sort of flowing mustache and whatnot. That, that's you know, awesome. Thick yeah. eyebrow. So it's, uh, yeah, that, that was pretty cool. Absolutely. I think it's wonderful you were able to incorporate that. Seriously, that's that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> He's trying to Terry's, I guess you're pulling up stuff just to, yeah, we're just trying as to we see go what along, you can find. Man. Yeah. Yeah. So uh and time grab's still going on. I mean, the last one dropped what right around last year, late last year, yeah. or early this and 20, then 2019, yeah. Mm -hmm. So is it going to, are you going to continue going down the path uh, with time grunts or I mean, what's the plan with it? Do you have some more places you're going with it or um, is the uh, newfound uh, <laughs> path you're on right now with all these projects you're on going to kind of slow you down on that? Um, you know, we're sort of uh, revisiting it now. Uh, at least I have been in terms of maybe uh, some sort of prequel ideas, uh, yeah. kicking them, kicking them around. Um, you know, Sometimes you sort of go away from a project for a while and look back and, and have some new ideas and think about how maybe you could improve something. Absolutely. This is, pretty awesome. this is uh, artwork by Alex Sanchez. It's sort of obviously sort of like a postcard type of image. Um, but we've also turned that into a T-shirt and some other products too. So That's, that's a great cool, shot. Great shot. Thank Sweet. you. I love it, dude. Thank you. I love it. That's awesome, man. And the, uh, the little details making it look like the actual postcard. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect, perfect finishing touch. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, he killed, he killed it on that for sure. All right. Okay, you're going to put that – oh, I thought – Oh, no. Gonna, <laughs> was, put that picture on there. He sent it to us. We might as well put it out there. The, the, uh, bio, the bio picture that you sent me just popped up last. This is when so. Evan was really working out a lot. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, actually, you know, that was uh, on the way back from uh, Memphis Comic Expo in 2019. Yeah. We uh, we stayed the night in uh, Metropolis, Illinois. Yeah. And obviously these, there's the uh, Superman Museum there. It's uh, If you ever get a chance and you're in the middle of nowhere, uh, stop in Metropolis. <laughs> um, it, it is pretty cool. We'll put it on That's the list, awesome. man. We'll put it on the list. That's awesome. I remember that Memphis one. It was a, it was a lot of fun, but there wasn't a lot of action. Well, well that okay. was a that was a great old school classic comic book show. Like I remembered as a kid. Yeah. 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 That, yeah. That's, that was the next thing we were going to talk about too, is like uh, the, the new, I guess, I mean, what, what, what is going to be the new combo con? Are we, are, are we ever going back to a place where we're going to be meeting in person or it seems like in some ways the digitals really helped indie commies <laughs> uh, comics. There you go. Why do I keep doing it, man? I got commie on the brain. <laughs> Uh, it's, all, it's all that it's all that Kickstarter talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brought up Kickstarter. <laughs> all of a sudden, I'm I'm turning red on us here. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> red commies, a project we love. <laughs> there you go. Uh, but <laughs> but you know, I I can't help but wonder. Um, I, I mean, it seems like as hard as it's been with uh, uh, the COVID jump that's that's tried to do what it's been doing. It, it, a lot of this digital stuff that's breaking out and happening now, it's kind of a reliance. I almost think it's, I think it's a, it seems like it's a chance for the independent comic books. Yes. Um, it's a window. To, mm -hmm. to, 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 to really pull out some things that even it seemed like the big three weren't able to do, you yeah. know, especially with the, all the disaster that diamond distributions had. Yeah. And, and everyone's yeah. being creative. Yeah. Go ahead. I think there was I think there was the perfect storm for indie creators. Yes, and, yeah. uh, you know, we you know, Patrick and I definitely took advantage of it. Um, we re-released Johnny Phantasm 1977 as singles to start with, I think, in March, right when the, yeah. the pandemic was hitting and Diamond. Yeah, I picked in. those up. Yep. And uh, thank you. And uh, yeah, those did well. And we said, well, let's 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 go for 85 and, and see how that does. And that did well. And that progressed to the toy. But I, I think you'll still see shows. People have a desire for that. Um, but I think maybe uh, you won't see as many creators there. Um, you know, for the creator, they can do just as well now selling stuff online, oh, yeah. streaming, uh, as they can for a show. Now, I think they need to keep uh, 
you know, appearances up and, and do some grassroots stuff. And I definitely plan on attending shows. I, I just love them. Yeah. Um, but, but for myself as a writer, I mean, and, and James, you probably agree. I mean, we don't exactly kill it at the shows, but you know, we, we have a ball and we connect with fans and yep. you know, sort of build that fan base up. Yeah. And we make connections in, in, in the biz, you know, yeah, um, that's, exactly. <laughs> I've met so many people and you know what I'm saying? We've talked about all that before. So many of uh, there's different actors and uh, producers and, 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 you know, not only do, do you meet them, you become acquainted with them and actually have some form of, you know, relationship that you continue to communicate and, you know, all it's, it, it's who, you know, and wh not what, you know, on all of this stuff. I mean, and so if you've got, if you've got a good uh, network there, you, you can go places. And, and that's the thing, you know, help, helping each other out is, is key, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, um, well, and now when, when you go into a com and the mask are required, I mean, they've already dressed up, right? You just can't wear the Batman cowl, but other yeah, than yeah. that, you're rocking it, right? Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I guess so, yeah. No, yeah. I, I think – I mean, I, I think – I really do – I think Comic-Cons are coming back at some point. I just – I can't imagine it going away. I, I just think, though, it's been – this opened the, the playing field to where there's a new – it's like – it was like guerrilla marketing on, on indie comic side. And it, it literally, it has changed everything. It, the thing I love about indie comics, and I keep talking about this all the time, is the stories are good. And if you want characters that are diverse or different or whatever, you don't have to like redo a character that's been around for 40 years. Why not come up with brand new, powerful, amazing characters that could be anything you want them to be and build a fan base around it? Yep. You know, instead of trying to force people to accept that now so and so is this, who cares? Give us something new. And yeah. so it's kind of cool that's, that these stories now are getting to break free with this, uh, yeah, that's this what, new era that's broken out, man. The Indian yeah, comics I, are dominating. I went, yeah, I went to the comic shop, uh, you know, two days ago and just uh, I didn't realize it till I left, but I didn't even visit. The, the Marvel or DC side, I went straight to the indie and uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, did my thing and, and, and I was out of there. But one other thing too, um, is that indie publishers themselves will have to strongly think about how they tailor their contracts and how they do business because as, as an independent creator now, I don't necessarily need to sign with a publisher to, you know, financially perform well. Wow. Um, but that's that's why I signed with Second Sight. Is they're one of the first publishers now who uh, allow you to also crowdfund while still pushing your book in diamond. So there's a little bit of uh, you know cre creator freedom there, which is nice. Yeah, yeah, that is good. No, it, it that is kind of weird. Like you know, they're like, yeah, we'll we'll be your publisher and everything, but you have to raise the funds to prove this is going to work <laughs> and pay for the whole thing, and mm -hmm. we'll handle it. It's like you're, yeah, it, it, that's amazing, man. So yeah, yeah. Well, and, and, and that's a great question, too, that Leroy is asking. And this is what I was wondering also is what's – it does seem like there are a lot of people out there self-publishing now, but there still is some benefit, right? I mean – Definitely. Because, like, Scout uh, is killing it right now, too, man. Scout yeah, no, Scout is killing Scout's it. Scout's doing a great job still getting the word out, staying connected with local comic book shops, doing the digital side of things, you know, and getting promotion out there. And yeah. and apparently they've made a really good friendship with our buddy, Comic Tom. <laughs> Comic Tom. Comic is, Tom, yeah. Is it, every week now, they're, they're, ish, they're, they're showing uh, Scout the, Comics the are Scout making title. the top 10 yeah. list now. Yeah, so. and Andreas was on the top 10. Yeah. Uh, the Shepherd, you know, a lot. everybody's heard this already, but The Shepherd, I don't even know where the account is at now because I haven't talked to Andrea for a few weeks about it. <laughs> but I think it was around... 10,000 copies, you know, right. uh, the shepherd, you know, sold yeah. on this last round. I'm like, that is amazing. Good, good for know? him. You know, he's, he's, yeah. uh, he's, uh, been a hustler, you know, uh, the last two years and really put the work in the time in. he deserves a, you know, Absolutely. every, uh, you know, positive uh, result he can get. That's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. But I mean, I mean, do you think that the, that, it's going to become more of a norm for people to start doing their own thing rather than relying on publishers or, or do you think there's always going to be some sort of partnership that's going on? I think there'll be a thinning of the herd. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, I think the indie publishers that re remain are the ones that somehow have uh, connections in Hollywood, uh, you know, uh, that have a proven track record of being able to transform a property into movie, TV, video game, what have you. Um, if they're not able to do that, uh, you know, I don't think those survive. Wow. I yeah. agree. 
it's it, it's definitely been an interesting atmosphere that we're walking into with all this stuff to see how it all breaks loose. You yeah. know, I honestly like even with like the trouble that went down with uh, uh, Diamond and everything, it, it still worked out. It still works out. It, it helps everyone. You know, it just proved that there was a need for something different in distribution than mm -hmm. what they were doing. You oh know? yeah, yeah, that right. And so we're starting right. to see Shook it up new ways of getting distribution out. You know, and. Uh, I, I don't know, man. I, I'm going to be one of those guys that I, I, I'm going to read digital because I want to get a hold of it, you know, but I still want, I, I still want the feel the of tangible. comic book too. And yeah, so yeah, I, I think I, there's going to be a balance in this forever, man. Yeah. I'm the same way. I've, I've got to have something in my hand. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I, I mean, it, it's exciting. You get a Well, it, even the idea of digital to me that, that always blows my mind is I love reading. I want to have it quickly. You know, if I don't want to wait, I'm going to get a hold of it. But then what do I do when I'm done with it? It's not like I can give it on to someone else or, no, no, no. or have something to show yeah. or yeah, yeah. it just sits there, you know, thousands of comic books in my iPad. Yeah. Hot dog, big deal. I mean, for know? me, because I'm, I'm old school. What? I'm old school, it's man. It's weird. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, the, the digital, <laughs> <the> digital <laughs> format. <laughs> All of James' story is like, I picked up that. It's like Hulk 8, 181. I, 181 I, was, I jumped on my bike and rode to 7-Eleven and picked that up when, when I was, was younger. 10 years old in 1974. <laughs> and that's truth, but yes. Nothing, nothing uh, wrong with 7-Eleven. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, back to it. I, I, For me, the niche of the digital is if there's something you can't get your hands on printed, you can at least get it there and see it that way first. And then if there's something you want to get a high-end book and you don't want to touch the book other than hold it within its protective wrappings then you can read it digitally and you don't have to crack the book yeah you know? that's a good point An another thing you know from our perspective as creators you know uh, you know caliber right now has a sale on comiXology you know on digital titles so if people were thinking about time grunts and they wanted to read issue one but not spend a fortune go ahead read issue one for you know a fraction of the price and if you dig it go ahead and pick up the you know printed there you copy. go that's it yeah. yep yeah, yeah. Get a taste of it and see if that's your bag. Right. So no, nah, I think that's great, man. I, I I guess, and that's where it's at. I think and I think this comment that uh Leroy made too is really smart, where it is nice when they give you both the the free digital copy and the and the physical copy. Mm -hmm. Um, especially when with digital, you just you never really own digital, right? I mean, it's not it's not the same as owning, but I just think I think it is amazing where we're going on this and and the projects are coming out. So and uh, and guys like uh, you know Brian Silverback, like I said, I, the thing I was telling that I thought was so cool about that is just the idea of building this sandbox where you're gonna have more characters that can be met, you know, like there's this little world you can play in, and they all can work together, mm -hmm. but also have their independence to do their own things. I, I think it's gonna help add in that competition when you've got you know Marvel that that's right now doing King and Black, and everything's a King and Black tie off, you know, and um, I don't know if you're gonna compete if you're gonna have if in order to bring mainstream and, and indie comic you know, books into that place, I, I think this is a wise thing to pull off on that. So absolutely. For, for, for Brian also, it's smart. I mean, he can get feedback from a fan saying, okay, which characters did, did, did fans enjoy, which did not, not perhaps. Yeah. And then he can use that information to go ahead and say, all right, I'm going to do, you know, this character first and launch this first. Yep. So, you know, yep. It's, it's a, a great idea all the way around. Absolutely, yeah. Instead of Marvel presents, it's it's Silverback presents. Yeah, that's right. There you go. That's right. <laughs> I'd buy it. Um, so, so yeah, whichever one is uh, thriving or the one that that you didn't anticipate such a massive response, that would be the one to turn around and do a spinoff and and do its own title or whatever. You know that kind of thing. Where yeah. You not only have the Kara Prime, you got the individual character, and they can have, you know, their own book. Whether it start with a one shot, see how it does, and then go from there. There you yeah. go. Yeah. And and apparently the chat uh demands some AR one uh AR fifteen orangutan, which is uh Shit. indie another indie uh AR actually looked that orangutan. one up the other day. Okay. I was checking that out the other day. So there you go. We said it. You're that, welcome, chat. Yeah. I said it sounds your like plug. A, the title, the title <laughs> rocks. It, it it's piqued my interest just hearing it. Yeah. Uh here in Oklahoma, what we think is we want to make uh, hunting more fair, so we're gonna help deer learn how to hunt. That's right. And so yeah. We'll yeah. give them machine gun antlers. Yeah. So that'll be our our plug. Bazooka <laughs> Bazooka Buck. <laughs> bazooka, bazooka Buck. buck. <laughs> he holds it in his horns. <laughs> yeah. There you go, maybe Evan. A, if you need another up. project, we've got a writing there assignment you. for you. Bazooka you Buck. Go. 
It's the a team deer up. avenging. He's taking out all of us rednecks and orange in the woods. So, okay. uh, and here's my dad joke of the night. Oh, Segue no, right into it. What do you call a blind Thanks, Johnny. buck? What do you call a blind buck? <laughs> Don't know. No idea. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> all right. We're going home. That's it. This is over. This interview is yeah. over. We're done. <laughs> we're done. We're done. That's hilarious. I couldn't resist. I had to. Well, uh, so uh, Care Prime's coming. So, and you said you got eight projects. Is there anything else you can tell us about that's coming up we need to know about? Yeah. So, uh, Stefano, Stefano and I have a book coming out called Joe the Bull, which is a really cool concept. Um, it's about a resident of a nursing home who's a former mob enforcer that longs for the old days. Nice. And, uh, wow. And God approaches him and says, I'll give you back your youth and then some if you avenge the deaths of certain innocent people. So wow. it's sort of uh, sort of a uh, Punisher, you know, meets the crow kind of story. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, really cool stuff. Now, what, so is he going to be avenging people in old age or will he regain his youth and then go out and do what he's doing before, but avenging that way? He'll regain his youth first. Okay. Or is it uh, like a, a Ghost Rider thing? He only turns young when it's time to avenge. <laughs> no, he's yeah, he's per, he's yeah. permanent for a. Uh, it's a sort of like the uh, you know the task of Hercules. You know, he's got to complete his task in order to fulfill the deal. Gotcha. That's cool, man. So, will yeah. it be a, a short run, or is this going to be a continual series? Or we're looking at a five issue limited series. Uh, we've got two offers already. Um, Wow. We're gonna we're gonna crowdfund it in some format. We're just not sure what yet, but uh, you know we've got uh, 22 pages of art plus three covers done already, and uh, Justin's gonna be working on the lettering soon. So uh, it's a really really cool book. That's awesome, man. And that's called Joe the Bull. Joe the Bull. Yep. I love the it, bull. man. I love it. That's gonna be awesome. Thank you. Uh, and and I guess when that gets ready to launch, if you'll let us know, we'll throw it up on uh, all of our social media with you know, oh, yeah, for sure. it and, and uh, James will back it. And uh, absolutely. <laughs> it, it, that's that's where he got his first three copies of Johnny Phantasm. I, I just rat I just ratted him out. His yeah. first three copies I got him for. Him. Nice. Thank you. I, I, wait, wait, I backed it. I promise I backed he did, it. He did. He did. I backed it. it. I didn't know about it until I got those first three copies yeah. and I sat down and read it. And uh, did y'all hear that honking noise, that bus that James was driving just ran me over. But uh, <laughs> we went right under it. <laughs> Greyhound. No, but yeah, let us let us know what's on when that. Do, do you, so you don't really have it set up where it'll be a time or anything, but it's just projects you guys are working on right now? Yeah, um, that's sort of uh, on both our plates right now. Um, and I sent uh, the script over to Justin. So he after he knocks out Silence 3, that's his next project. So. Uh, yeah, you should see, see some posts pretty soon. No, let me ask Cardicelli. Did he work on the Shepherd too? Uh, he no. did. Uh, I believe a variant cover. A variant cover uh, yeah. for the Shepherd, and he's done some prints. I think for Andrea as well. That he made the yeah. introduction for me. So okay, cool. yeah, cool. Okay, I knew I knew there was an association there with uh, Andrea. So yeah, yeah, That's and that goes back to you know sort of the networking thing. You know, uh, mm -hmm. different people meet different people. You know, and one thing leads to another. Yeah. And these intellectual properties, you know, the, the name recognition, character recognition, just if it, when you, when you go to the cons, when you, when you meet people and you get everything circulated pretty soon, people that have never heard of it will say, Hey, what is this here? And then two or three guys that they respect and, and take their advice say, Hey, I've seen this. This is good, man. Oh, really? And so it just kind of domino effect, you know, yeah. word of mouth. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, getting back in the cons and uh, seeing you guys in person again. You know, definitely. Uh, you know, we we were we were a couple of lucky ones. I mean, we were able to actually do a show in uh, 2020. You know, we did Wizard World New Orleans together. Yep. Yep. Um, and not not many creators can say you know that they did a show. So I great, totally great agree. Memories. Yeah, great memories from that show. You know, sort of bittersweet as to you know what was coming down the road right. after that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and it makes you appreciate the, the experience that much more. Honestly. Definitely. Yeah, Definitely. and I'm looking forward to getting back to New Orleans at some point. And uh, we're out there hanging out and getting some beignets in the morning. And, you there know, you go. taking some it from there. Night. Yeah. yeah some other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. James keeps coming back with all these beads every time he goes out there. Yeah. So I don't know what he's doing on that end. but uh, yeah, That goes back to the uh, shopping uh, strategy with the wife, I bet. 
Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, that's awesome. That's uh, I baby. think uh, yeah, Billy Billy was asking who's drawing Joe the Bull again. That's uh, Stefano Carticelli. I think we might have some art of that also, or no? I was looking, he was looking I was, for I was trying to – it's not all labeled, so I, I don't know what's silence and what's uh, – did, did you send it to me right after silence? Uh, they were figuring out what was going on. What I was actually doing was frantically flipping through every picture I had. <laughs> like, where is that picture he sent me? I'm not seeing it. No, I, I don't think I end up with I don't think you – well, gotcha. let me go further up here. Let me go. Let He's, me find this. I'm, I'm, I'm dropping the ball. The only thing I'm good for, I dropped the ball on. Um, now you just mentioned it earlier when we were talking that, that you would Got talk it. about it, but you didn't send me a picture. Send me one real quick and I'll, I'll post it up there or you could just offer to share the screen. And I'll let you share it. I'll give you permission to share the screen. So, yeah. Let me send you something real quick. I'll be right back. <laughs> Meanwhile, there you go. I just sent over, uh, the cover okay. of I'll pop that out there real quick. Oh good. yeah. No, you I think I did. Uh, I'll just here we go. All right. If everyone's really nice, I'll let you see the picture too, but you gotta be uh, on your best behavior. That's you and George and Leroy on your best behavior, and we'll let you see this picture. Good luck with this crowd. <laughs> I don't think Leroy has best behavior. No, neither one of them seem to. <laughs> they they have some sort of animosity towards me. <laughs> I listen. It's, it's the it's the ribbing thing you do with your friends. Yeah, That's yeah, what it is. yeah. I know you guys love me so much. I appreciate it, dude. This is beautiful, man. This is cool. Thank you. Oh yeah. yeah, that's fun, man. It's got kind of a almost a Frank Miller vibe to it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's the second time I've heard that. Also, I you know a little Michael me, Golden there. Uh, a little uh, you know James O'Barr, but more polished. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I dig that, man. Thank that's you. cool. Yeah, he's he's killer. And, uh, you know, similar to Patrick, uh, we're doing that book, uh, Marvel style. Well, you know, I'll, I'll write a couple of short stories and then, you know, those guys, those guys don't need any hand holding. They're, they're pros. They can do their own layouts and, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, it, it, it's weird. You know, I, I enjoy working both ways, full script and, you know, Marvel, uh, Marvel's obviously less work for me. And once you find an artist that you trust in terms of doing the layouts, it's, you know, it's a breeze. Yeah, nice. it, that's a great what you just said. Did you do a bunch of uh, layout or uh, you know just a, a page construction of of the early time grunts stuff? Did you do a lot for, of those for time grunts? I did, and for silence, silence was full script. And then I've got a little uh, horror short coming out called Cat Lady uh, with Nick Polico, uh, which is pretty awesome. Um, that'll be in the Harvest of Horrors anthology that's jointly published by Caliber and Second Sight. Um, it's just, you know, for someone who's working full time, full script can be extremely time consuming, but, you know, I, I, you know, the biggest influence on me is, uh, you know, GI Joe 21, uh, silent interlude, you know, to be able to tell a story without, you know, having any words whatsoever. So, you know, I, I place a premium on the visual aspect of the storytelling and work Absolutely. from there. Absolutely. Yeah. So when you like you're writing that out too, I mean you're just you're writing it as a story that's going to give enough description for the artist to kind of pull that in, right? Do you write that in story format first? I mean, what's the process on pulling something like that off in the writing side of things? For Patrick, it can be anything from you know sort of uh, you know short bursts that are almost poetic uh, to something that's sort of a short story format. For Joe the Bull, it was a short story, and uh, you know Stefano went from there. Cool, that's awesome, man. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. George wants you to tell the future plans for Johnny. What are uh, y'all going to do with Johnny? Is he going to get going to the nineties? Major plans. Yeah, definitely. We're doing uh, a little uh, Liefeld sort of uh, tribute. We're doing extreme 93 that we're launching very shortly. <laughs> um, I've How seen his a feet looking that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, no comments. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we're never gonna get a big interview like that anyway, so I don't have to tread lightly on that. <laughs> you know, it's, it, it's it's funny you mention that. I don't buy, buy many uh, IDW books, but I did purchase this while I was at the shop. That's uh, Liefeld's version of uh, Snake Eyes. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's beautiful. I love that. 
I need to throw out some good stuff, man. I'm 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 not they've had some great stuff. Yeah, yeah I'm not yeah. disappointed. Yeah, like I, I love indie, but I I I I don't know. I, I'm gonna read what I'm gonna read. I'm not gonna feel guilty about it. Yeah. So yeah. I'm I'm back in as much no indie as possible, but I, I yeah. love I love what I love and I'm just I'm just gonna do what I want to do with it. So yeah. yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So yeah, we've got uh, we've got that coming out uh in a couple months. Uh Patrick has a book uh coming out called Ultra Star that he's doing on his own. Um he's gonna be a busy beaver this year. Uh and what else we got coming down the line? Uh more toys. Uh, we're discussing doing some more toys uh, later this year. Um, so it should be a, a fun 2021. Some uh, stuffed toys versus plastic. Yeah. No, no. You know yeah, yeah, like back has those. He yeah, the little those... mini kind of beanie baby looking things or whatever. Uh, no, actually, uh, Brian Silverbacks, I think, is going to have those as a tier on uh, some of his Kara Prime stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, now we're sticking, uh, you know, to sort of the Star Wars style Kenner figures for now, and then maybe branching out after that. Yeah, very cool. Excellent. Very cool. I Excellent. like it. I like it. I'm, I'm checking to make sure we're still on. So apparently, I'm having some signal issues again. So, well, that's awesome, man. Um, yeah. Well, I too, I'm, I'm getting the. I, I'm gonna. I want that. I'm getting the glow in the dark uh, version of the Johnny Phantasm. So Thank looking you. forward to that. So. Um, it's my birthday gift to myself. Yeah, yeah. And we're gonna. Oh, happy it. birthday! Yeah, we're, turning we're, older. Well, we may, we may do. <laughs> hey, we may do this live where we go in and put it in front of an intense light and go into a dark room and say, "Look at it go!" <laughs> right there, just there live go. demonstration of the product. <laughs> maybe have someone behind the shower curtain jump out while we're doing. It. Well, I'm hoping it's glowing for radioactive reasons, and like if we ingest any part of it, we get some powers from it. Also, That's exactly and right. Then, you never uh, know. You never yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to shoot better than I do. Right? <laughs> so, well, that's awesome, man. Well, yeah, Evan, I think that's awesome. Thanks, everyone, for the birthday wishes. It's just basically me surviving. That's yeah, right. And by the way, birthday is Tuesday? Yeah, Tuesday. Tuesday. Survived right. 41 years of not doing stupid stuff enough to kill myself. So, uh, living! Woo! Um, yeah, I was, yeah. I was in high school when you were born. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> I flunked the grade, so that's class of 99, baby. <laughs> yeah. Go. I like the eighth grade so much I did it twice. So, um, no, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, we're looking forward to everything you're pulling out, man. So just let us know what you're doing next. And, uh, For sure. and, and we want to we wanna just kind of meet with anything you're doing, man. Let us know. Hop back on sure. here. Yeah, we wanna... yeah, you're coming back. For sure. We're going to do really talk you. more, yeah. Thanks uh, for having me, guys. Absolutely. This is, uh, it's been wonderful. And it's really great to see you and talk to you again. It's likewise. Likewise. Can't, can't wait to see you uh, in person. Absolutely. You bet. Yeah. Yeah. All right, my friend. You take it easy. Have a great night, man. All right. Happy happy birthday again. Thanks, bro. Thanks. Appreciate it, y'all. Give our wishes to your family. Will do. Okay. All right. See you later. Yeah. All right, guys. Evan did not disappoint. Brian Absolutely didn't not. disappoint. No. The Kevin Feige of Kara Prime did That's disappoint. Right. Um, I, I loved Andrea's interview. I mean, this has been fun, man. I, we're just going to keep doing this. Anyone that wants to come talk with us, we're going to pop them on with us and have some conversations. And, it, and you guys, when we're doing the stream and you give us a really good idea and we don't respond because we're distracted, yeah, come go, come back after us and pester <laughs> us and say, dude, I told you to do this. Okay? Yeah, and yeah. We, don't, we, we love that. We won't mind and it. I tell you what, coming up too, what I'd love to do is some of you guys that are, that are hanging out and on other streams, man, uh, give us a shout out. Let's meet. Let's talk. And uh, we, we want to see what you are doing, too. So let's let's come up with a way you guys pop on and hang out. Leroy, George, let's let's set up something, man. Hey. Let's sit down and talk. I want to get yeah, to yeah. know you guys. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I like what you're doing. I've been checking out your Comic Gate stuff. You guys are rocking it, man. So uh, um, we're going to go ahead. We've got uh, people outside yeah. of this unit that we're in right now wanting to hang out with us that are banging on they're the like, glass yeah, door they're, right they're now. They're putting their mouth on the glass. <laughs> You know, so this kind of thing. We're going to drop off, um, put down some other guests that you think we should be hanging out with. We've got um, a lineup with the guys from Kara Prime that we're, we're setting up with. Um, we're working on some big stuff uh, mm -hmm. behind the scenes that we're hoping those happen. Yes. Uh, and some cool projects yeah. that we're going to be putting out here pretty soon. So man, just hang out with us. Uh, as always, man, like this video, comment. It helps us out. Share it with your friends. Let's let's grow the nerd communities, man. We've been uh, subscribing to your guys' stuff because you guys are rocking it too. And uh, y'all yep. have a wonderful week. Stay nerdy, my friends. We'll talk to you very soon. We'll see you. See you guys. In broadcast. <laughs> it's over.